Previously, I studied about uh, different uh, modulation techniques. That is uh, amplitude modulation and then uh, frequency modulation. So, based on these things, we will be having uh, the radio transmitters. And the block schematic that we have shown is a general uh, radio communication uh, system that we are going to have. So as we said that for any communication, we require a source, a communication link, and the destination. So basically we will be having uh, in a radio communication, a transmitter, which are represented as uh, a radio transmitter. A radio transmitter, and then we have a channel, and the radio receiver that we are going to have it. So this channel is for a normal radio communication, it is going to be a space, open space that we are going to have it, except in the wired communication that we are going to have it between the source and destination, we will be having a cable or a wire that we are going to have it, so that uh, a communication can be established between the source and uh, destination. So what is that we are going to have in this uh, radio? transmitter that we are going to have. So we will discuss uh, more in detail about this uh, radio transmitter and then later on we will study about uh, some details about radio receiver. So as we see that uh, how do you classify this uh, radio transmitter? So one thing is uh, based on the modulation we can say it is uh, AM transmitter or an FM transmitter that we are going to have it. And in the AM we will be having a general AM with the DSB with carrier and SSB transmission that we are going to have it. So for long distance uh, communication we will be using uh, the AM transmission and for point to point communication we will be using an SSB transmission that we are going to have. So except the moderator part remaining things are going to be the same for uh, AM transmission or SSB transmission that we are going to have it. So we can say that uh, we have AM transmitter or an FM transmitter basically. And in the FM we have seen that uh, phase modulation and uh, frequency modulation but uh, in subsequent uh, stages we have seen that this phase modulation we have increased the deviation with number of uh, multipliers and got a wide band FM. So that uh, normally we will not transmit a phase moderate signal in a general case in the analog uh, system that we are going to have it. Therefore, uh, we will be having that frequency moderator or frequency moderate transmitters or FM transmitters will be there or AM transmitter. In addition to this uh, classification, we can also classify these transmitters as a low level modulation transmitters are the systems are high level modulation systems. We have our uh, baseband signal or the modulating signal, then we have the carrier because to effectively radiate we said that we require a high frequency carrier. So we have two sources, a carrier generation and the modulating signal or the baseband signal generator that we are going to have it. So these two have to be combined to give you the required AM modulation or FM modulation that we are going to have it. So where we modulate and how we will transmit the total power that we are going to have it. If you want to transmit over long distances, then the more power has to be fed into the transmitter. You will be having a 1 watt transmitter or 1 kilowatt transmitter or 100 kilowatt transmitter depending on the coverage of your transmitting station that we are going to have it. Therefore, to generate that much power, how we are modulating? Suppose you have a baseband signal at a low power level and a carrier also at low power level, then you have a modulation, then have a power amplification so that you will be getting the required 
high power levels. So what is that? So at the lower level of power levels, we are modulating and then transmitting. After obtaining the required power level by using number of amplifiers. So that means modulation is taking at a low power level and then your transmission is at the required power levels that we are going to have. So this type of modulation we call it as a low level modulation. That is both the carrier and baseband signal are at low power levels. You modulate it, then amplify it to get you the required power that we are going to have it. That is what we will call a low level modulation. The other classification is high level modulation. That means you generate the required power, carrier power, and required modulation signal power to required levels so that we require get the required modulation indexes. How much level you want it? At a 30% or 40% or 70% modulation, you want to have it. Based on that, you raise your baseband signal power and the carrier power using number of amplifiers. Then at the final stage, you modulate it and output of this modulator, you directly transmit it to the antenna. That means you are initially amplifying it, then at a high power level, you are modulating it and this modulated output, you are straight away transmitting to the space, to the antenna. So this type of modulation, we call it as high level modulation. So you may say that the classification is AM transmitters and FM transmitters or on the level of modulation, it is low level modulation or high level modulation that we are going to have it. A typical uh, AM modulation, we can have it. So basically, we require a crystal oscillator of high frequency, RF frequency that we are going to have it. Then here, we are having a class C RF power amplifiers to increase the power level of your carrier signal. And in between, we are saying that a class A buffer amplifier are keeping it. Why do you require a buffer amplifier? Impedance matching. If you are having a crystal oscillator, which is very, very stable, and the class C amplifier, the impedances are going to be varying. Therefore, if the crystal oscillator output impedance and the input impedance of class C power amplifier, which is a variable one, will not be matching always. Therefore, this class C amplifier will be loading the crystal oscillator. Therefore, your performance of the crystal oscillator will be affected by this loading of the class C power amplifier. To avoid that, in practice, we will be using a class A buffer amplifier. And you have said that what is class A amplifier, class B amplifier, and class C amplifier. Okay? So if the total signal is going to be 360 degrees, then we say it is a class A amplifier, 180 degrees, it is class B. And less than that, we are saying that it is a class C amplifier, which will be having more efficiency in the case of class C amplifiers compared to class B. And class A amplifier. Typically class A amplifier will be having 25% of uh, efficiency and uh, class B amplifier will be having 50% and class C will be having much more. Therefore, to have better efficiency, we will be going for class C power amplifiers. And we are getting some higher level of the power output compared to our this translator output that we are going to have. So we will be going for required uh, oscillations at this point may be at a harmonics of the required RF transmission also. Whereas in the modulating signal, the baseband signal, whatever you are going to have, it is audio frequency basically. So that we are saying that a signal conditioning we are going to have it or a processing, pre-processing or 
conditioning that we are going to have. What is that conditioning we are doing? In the case of your audio signal, we say that the frequency may be up to 20 kilohertz, but the maximum energy is going to be up to 3.3 kilohertz with a guard band up to 4 kilohertz of your filter. So after the 4 kilohertz, we will be eliminating all the frequency components because that doesn't consider more than 2% or 3% of your total power. Therefore, we will be having some initial processing of the baseband signal. We are going to have it. So audio signal, we are going to convert into electrical signal using a sensor. Then we are having the required conditioning that we are going to have it so that we are going to restrict the frequency band of the audio frequency signal. Then we are having the required pre-amplification that we are going to have it to get the required matching between the signal conditioning and the plus B power amplifier that we are going to have it. So we are going to have the required plus B power amplifier are going to have it to have more efficiency. Then the output of this is given to another audio frequency output amplifier to get the required power level that we are going to have it. So these two plus C power RF amplifier of the oscillator output and the modulating signal output are combinedly given to a RF amplifier which is modulating amplifier that we are going to have it. So oscillator output and AF output both are given here to give you the required modulation. It may be a character modulation or base modulation that we are going to have it depending on the design of the modulator that we are going to have it. So your A modulator that we are going to have it, you have to have this, this stage, the required amplification. So if you say that we are straight away transmitting the output of this modulator to the antenna, then we call that as high level modulation. Because after modulation of the required power levels, we are getting the output and that we are transmitting to give you high level modulation. Whereas, if the output of this RF amplifier, output amplifier is not the required power level, then we have to have further amplification here to give you the required transmission power. So if you have after modulation, Further amplification, then this we call it as a low level modulation that we are going to have it. At low power levels of oscillator and the audio frequency, we are combining or modulating, and that we are amplifying further to give you the required level of the power that we want to transmit. And 1 kilowatt or 100 kilowatts or whatever may be the transmission power of your station that we are going to have it. So that's what a low level modulation we are going to have it. So this is the way that we are going to have it, a general transmitter block schematic of AM transmission that we are going to have it for uh, high level modulation or a low level modulation that we are going to have it. And here we said that this RF oscillator is generating required carrier frequency. Sometimes we will be generating a low carrier frequency. Then using the multipliers or cross C amplifiers with the harmonic generations, we will be getting the high frequency. Like what you have seen in the case of Armstrong method, we generated 200 kilohertz and got up to 96 megahertz as the carrier frequency. So similarly here also, in addition to the class C power amplifiers, we will be using harmonic generators also to have the required stability of your RF oscillator that we are going to have it. As the carrier frequency also increases the crystal stability, instead of having a 200 kilohertz oscillator, if you say that I have 100 megahertz oscillator, then even small minor variations gives you a lot of variation in the carrier frequency. Therefore, we will be normally generate a subharmonic crystal oscillator frequency to have very, very stable 
kind of frequency that we are going to have it. Then along with this class C power alpha, we are going to have the harmonic generators also. So that that gives you the required RF frequency that we are going to have it. So that we are showing in this block schematic that we are going to have. It. So we are having a crystal oscillator which generates subharmonic frequency of the final transmitted carrier frequency that we are going to have it. If you say that FC is the final carrier frequency that we want to transmit, FC by M we are having as the crystal oscillator that we are going to have. It. So where N is your number of uh, multipliers that we are going to that we are going to have. So that this will be the subharmonic frequency of the final oscillate carrier frequency that we are going to have it. So to get this required carrier frequency, we are going to have harmonic generators also along with class C power amplifiers. So the frequency multiplication and the power amplification is done in this class C power amplifiers and harmonic generators that we are going to have it. Then, as I said, that uh, modulating signal amplifier, a modulating amplifier, and let's see, this is the amplifier that we are going to have it. Then you will be having a linear amplifier to give you the required transmission. And this, if this linear amplifier is not there, what does it mean? This amplifier is not present. What does it mean? It is high level modulation what we are doing. If we have this amplifier, then here we are doing a low level modulation. Why do we say that a linear amplifier we are going to provide here? Why not a class amplifier, which is going to be having a high efficiency compared to our class B amplifier that we are going to have it? Because when you have a modulation along with the carrier, you have your side bands also upper side band and lower side band, whereas all these amplifications what we are providing is only for a single frequency. Therefore, even this, because we have harmon generators, we require the nonlinearity also to give you required high frequency components from the subharmonic frequencies. Whereas, after modulation, if you have a nonlinear operation that we are going to have it, the side bands will not maintain the same relations that we are going to have it. To maintain this side bands in a proper condition, we are providing only linear amplifier here. So designing the linear amplifier is a problem in the case of low level modulation, whereas high level modulation generating high power here and high power here is the limitation that we are going to have it. So depending on the application and the finances that we are going to have to have to design either the low level modulation on high level modulation that we are going to have. In the low level modulation, design of this is critical. In the high level modulation, design of this high power amplifiers is going to be a limitation that we are going to have. So depending on that, we will be designing what? Either the low level modulation or high level modulation that we are going to have. And to get the more stability, here we are shown that the crystal oscillator is going to be a subharmonic of the actual transmission that we are going to have it and here the actual high frequencies are generating by using this harmonic generators that we are going to have. So this is the typical uh, block diagram that we are going to have it, the AM transmitter. A final, minor, minor modification I have done here from the previous block, harmonic generators also included because here we are saying that instead of a direct carrier frequency generation, we are having a subharmonic carrier frequency by your crystal oscillator in this block. So here I have shown a dotted line and with what to call a feedback loop. What is the advantage of this feedback loop? There you are, there in the ECA, circuit analysis. Huh? Stability you are having. So you are not come up to feedback. Feedback you are completed? Okay. Then you know what is the advantage of the feedback that we are going to have it. Hmm? Negative feedback. Yeah. So we are providing 
a feedback loop here that we are going to have. So whatever the transmitted output, we are passing through a rectifier. And this may not be exactly the total transmitted 100 kilowatt that we are going to have, but with some identification, we are providing here the rectification. So what will be the output of this rectifier? What will be the output of the rectifier? Well, this is a AM signal. Pulsating. So we have a rectifier. Your LM detector we are having. A rectifier and a low pass filter that we are going to provide here in the circuit. We are getting a baseband signal. The demoted signal we are having. Instead of having a detector, I said a rectifier. We have, we have seen that rectifier detector also. We have envelope detector and a rectifier detector. So I have provided here rectifier detection that we are going to have it so that we will be getting back the baseband signal here. This EFB in this loop that we are going to have it A, B, C, D, E, F and G. The output of rectifier EFB is going to be the baseband signal that we are going to have it. This has been combined here with the Input signal EA and the output voltage EA at the point A, EA has been given combined to your modulation amplifier. So that EB equal to EA plus EFB, but EFB is opposing the EA value. We are providing a negative feedback. <coughs> so what will be having? This signal is amplified. Then we are getting the signal output. If this is opposing, what will happen? The output will be reduced. But when we have this, both are equal. What do you want? Finally, at the output, you should have the same EA as the modulating signal that we are going to have it. When you have the no distortions because of the modulation or the modulation amplifier that we are going to have it, with all these things, we will be having EA to be coming here as the same signal with the carrier modulation because you will be having some distortions in the modulations instead of EA some variations may be there in this modulation circuit so that the output that we are transmitting is not exactly the modulated signal corresponding with this EA if that be the case then we are having a feedback which is equivalent to that of EA then we are having error signal if they are not equal if they are equal then the error signal will be zero so that we are getting back the same year that we are going to have it. So by having this negative feedback, we are having the gain as reduced as 1 by 1 plus AB. Okay? So this A beta has to be fixed by varying the modulation amplifier gain that we are going to have it. Because other things are fixed for us. So here, to get that required value of A beta, we are providing here a modulation amplifier in this loop. So this gives you more stability in the circuit that we are going to have it. But this, the main requirement here for the feedback is not the stability, but the stash in the noise performance that we are going to have it. Because if you have this, this circuit will be introducing some noise, each of the modulators, because you are having all the variations in the signal level that we are going to have it. So this noise should not be transmitted. So to reduce that distortion that may be coming because of the modulation amplifier or the modulated amplifier, we are providing a feedback. So that without the feedback, you have a transmission gain as A. With the feedback, you are having A by 1 plus A beta. So that the distortion is going to be reduced with the factor of 1 by 1 plus A beta that we are going to have. So you are uh, hum, yeah, hum also is going to be reduced. Distortion also is going to be reduced by providing the required A beta value for the loop feedback that we are going to have. So with a negative feedback, we are providing more efficient performance of your AM transmitter rather than having without a loop that we are going to have. Previously we have said without this loop. <coughs> now we are providing 
this loop that we are going to have it so that the distortion can be reduced and hum modulation also can be reduced when you are generating the signal because of the nonlinearity in this that we are going to have it it will generating a hum also because this hum is nothing but your harmonics of your 50 hertz power signal so that has to be reduced so that also will be reduced with this loop feedback that we are going to have it all the negative feedback we are providing here to reduce the distortion in the circuit that we are going to have it in this modulated amplifier and the hum modulation that we are going to have in addition to the af signal the hum signal the 50 hertz harmonic signal also may be there in this generation of the electrical power that we are going to have so that also will be reduced in this negative feedback loop that we are going to have okay so that is the advantage of going for this negative loop that we are going to have whatever you have studied all the advantages of that negative feedback will be coming here also feedback loop that we have going to have okay so that is about our uh, am transmitter that's what we have said that uh, it gives you low distortion and less hum modulation that we are going to have because of that 1 by 1 plus a beta factor that we are going to have so distortion also is be reduced by this uh, 1 by 1 plus a beta and hum modulation also is going to reduce because of this reduction in the hum level by 1 by 1 plus a beta that we are going to have so always we have more efficient uh, transmission we will be going for this negative feedback system that we have so that is about uh, the basic am transmitter that we are going to have so here in this modulation we are going to provide the amplitude modulation this modulated amplifier is nothing but an amplitude modulator that we are going to have in this of amplitude modulation if you have a ssb modulation instead of having that am modulator i have this amplifier modulated amplifier i have put it as ssb modulator and that will be our ssb transmitter that we are going to have and anyway, we said that ssb will be having a filtering method and phasing method that we are going to have it. so the total block is going to be there in this modulator that we are going to have it so we are showing that block in the next slide are going to be provided with Special circuit that we are going to have it to improve the performance of the system that we are going to have. It. So here we are saying that that we are going to provide is the peak limiters in the amplitude modulator transmitters. We are going to provide what you call the peak limiters. They will be having this uh, volume compression when you have high intensity negative peaks in the baseband signal. What will happen if you have high intensity negative peaks in the baseband signal so the signal will be going with high intensity going down with a negative peak that we are going to have it that means the slope of this is going to be very very high for this high intensity negative peaks when you have this high intensity negative peaks that means very slope is very high then we are going to have high frequency side bands are going to be generated If we have a smooth variation that we are going to have it, the frequency content is small. Whereas if you have an abrupt variation that we are going to have it, here we are having a variation. Suddenly there is a negative peak in the signal. Okay, something like this. A variation that we are going to have it is a slow variation. Whereas you have a variation. Suddenly there is a drop and then coming back again. So this negative peak, sudden intensity peak, generates high frequency components. Therefore, you are modulated signal will be having these high frequency side bands and these side bands will interfere with adjacent channels so that we are going to have what you call adjacent channel interference if you want reduce this high frequency that is uh, high intensity negative peaks that we are going to have it so to avoid that we are going to provide what you call the peak limiters which will be reducing this high intensity negative peaks that we are going to have so that the side bands will not be interfering with the other channels that we are going to have it. so all the am transmitters will be providing with the required peak limiters 
The other feature that we are going to have it is AVC or what you call automatic volume control. So we are saying that uh, when we have the baseband signal, we have to maintain the required average modulation that we are going to have it. As a 60% or 70% whatever we are going to have it, maintain it properly so that we will be getting required power transmission that we are going to have it. Whereas, if there is going to be different speakers are there, different speakers gives different levels of the signals that we are going to have it. Especially in police communication that we are going to have it. Now all your uh, pocket is another thing that we are having. So if a person who will speak loud, they will be having the required modulation. Whereas a person who will be speaking very, very low, then what will happen? The average level of the modulation will be reduced for that. Therefore, that gives the distortion in the transmission that we are going to have it. Because the power level reduces, therefore, because if M reduces, happen the sideband power reduces because M squared by 2 will be reduced. Therefore, you want M to be as much possible larger value, tending to 1. But the same carrier power we are having, but the baseband signal that we are going to have it is reduced. And the signal source itself. Therefore, to avoid that, to maintain an average modulation value, we are going to provide what you call automatic volume control. So that whomever may be speaking with high intensity or low intensity, the volume is going to maintain constant so that the total power will not be disturbed. The other one is the volume compressor that we are going to have it. As you said that in the case of peak limiters, we are having high intensity value that we are going to have it. So similarly here, the source we will be having varying intensity levels that we are going to have it. So when the intensity is going to be more, the modulation indexes are going to be changing. To maintain the average degree of modulation, even for the weak signals, we are going to provide what you call the volume compressors that we are going to have. So that the total performance of the system is going to be at the required level that we are going to have. So we will be having uh, peak limiters or automatic volume or the volume compressors to give you the required performance of your AM transmitter that we are going to have. So as I said, instead of AM modulation, we are provided here SSB modulation. So that this will be the SSB modulator. Forget about this dotted line for the time being. So we are having a oscillator, like what we have in the case of AM transmitter, then a buffer amplifier, plus the power amplifier and the modulator. Instead of amplitude modulation, we are, we are saying SSB modulator. What are maybe the methods that we are generating? Is a phasing method or filter method that we are going to have it. The input that we are going to give it is the oscillator frequency and the baseband signal that we are going to have it. So these two signals are given to this SSB modulator. Output of this is only upper sideband or a lower sideband. So that the transmitted power will be only one sideband that we are going to have it. So that uh, will be having what you call a point to point communication that we are going to have. So the remaining things, the pre-processing and required amplification for the baseband signal is the same that we are going to have it as that of your AM transmitter. So that this is transmitted and at the receiving end we have to get back the original signal. And we have said that we are going to have a coherent detection. So we said that by square circuit, then the frequency divider, we have said that we are generating cos omega ct. But if there is an error in the frequency that we are going to generate at the 
receiving end because there is some variation in the phase variation at the transmission end from the transmission to receiving end that we are going to have it. Suppose you have the frequency components 200, 400 and 800. What does it mean? 200, 400, 800. They are harmonics. Right? Base frequency 200, first harmonic 400, second harmonic 800. But suppose there is an error in the demodulation in the carrier frequency by 40 hertz. Then what will happen? Instead of 200, 200 minus 40 will be coming. 160. And 400 minus 40, 360. And 800 minus 40, 760. So we are having 160, 360 and 760. And these are not the harmonics of your 160 hertz that we are going to have it. Therefore, the phase relation between these two signals are going to be different. Therefore, your total performance of the signal reception itself we will be losing the required frequency components. Therefore, to have the required frequency at the receiving end, we are going to transmit normally in the SSB a pilot carrier also. Now you assume that this dotted line also is existing. Previously we don't have. That's what SSB transmitter without pilot carrier, this dotted. With pilot carrier, these dotted lines will be coming into existence. So that means, along with the SSB monitored output, we are transmitting an attenuated carrier frequency also, which we call it as pilot carrier. So that along with your single sideband signal, we are having an attenuated carrier also. So that at the receiving end, you can use this pilot carrier to exactly generate your carrier frequency. Then, get the required operation effectively. So, Nabal will be going for a pilot carrier, SSP transmission that we are going to have it, so that receiver secured will not be a very, very complicated secure that we are going to have. Otherwise, even if we have a complicated secure, we, the performance, we are not guaranteeing completely. As we said that, for example, 200, 400, 800 hertz frequency that we are going to have it. Any small deviation in the carrier frequency that we are generating at the receiving end will cause the frequencies to be not in tune with the harmonics that we are going to have. So to have that, we are transmitting the carrier frequency also along with the modulated signal. Remaining all uh, amplification and then uh, the quad frequency generation is the same as the top of your AM transmitter of the air. In relation to this, uh, we are going for what we call the independent sideband transmission that we are going to have. Previously, we have seen a pilot carrier SSB transmission, and the other one is an independent sideband ISB transmission that we are going to have it. So, what we are doing is we are mixing the upper sideband and the lower sideband, adding here along with the required pilot carrier so that two signals we are transmitting at a time instead of one signal. So this LSB signal is corresponding to the channel B and the upper sideband filter is corresponding to channel A signal that we are going to have it. So two signals we have this channel B, A amplifier used with the balance modulator USB filter so that output of this is going to be an upper sideband signal. And the same carrier frequency 100 kilohertz is used to generate again an amplitude modulated signal, a double DSP signal. So that we are again passing through a low pass filter or the LSB filter so that we are getting the lower sideband. So these two are combined here, added here along with this pilot carrier. And this further mixing with the required 3, kilo, 3 megahertz signal from this 100 megahertz so that we are generating 3.1 megahertz that is the carrier frequency. 3 megahertz plus 100 kilohertz. So that will be our 
Now carrier frequency. The actual frequency that we are going to transmit is in a very high frequency from 1 to 40 megahertz. So we are going to have here a frequency synthesizer of 7.1 to 26.9 megahertz for your ISP transmission. And again you are going to use in this balance mixer to give you the required power and the required frequencies that we are going to have it. So this is, these two side bands are independent. They are not related. This is upper side band and this is the lower side band. So this upper side band corresponds to channel A and the lower side band corresponds to channel B. So that two signals simultaneously are transmitting using a one independent side band transmitter that we are going to have. So this is typically the SSB transmitter, the modification that we are going to have it combined with two channels A and B that we are going to have. The previous one is simply we have shown a typical uh, log diagram with a pilot carrier. So he is also using this pilot carrier with the 26 dB attenuator that we are going to have it. Okay? So that's what uh, with the signal that we are going to have. ISB with a pilot carrier that we are going to have. Okay? So that is about uh, the amplitude modulation and the SSB transmitter that we are going to have. transmitters, how to get uh, the required modulation. So modulation may be your uh, uh, character modulation or base modulation that we are going to have depending on the levels of uh, modulation that we have. If we are having a low power, then we will be going for uh, normally base modulation and uh, for high power levels, we will be going for character modulation that we are going to have. It is, uh, to get much higher powers, the existing systems will be having tubes also, wherein we will say that bed modulation and grid bias modulation that we are going to have. So sometimes you will be hearing these words also, the plate modulation and grid bias modulation, because when you are using the vacuum tubes to get the required power levels, because uh, your transistors works up to 30 volts, 0 to 30 volts, that's what we have seen, the transmit the caches of your uh, diode or the transistor, but whereas the tubes will be operating at 0 to 300 volts. So much higher voltage operations are there, therefore you will be having a high power generation also possible with the vacuum tubes that we are going to have. Then uh, we will be seeing what you call the frequency modulator, modulator transmitters that we are going to have it. So what is that we are having? The basic, uh, the blocks that we are given here is the indirect method of generation of uh, FM transmission and using that we are providing the FM transmitter. So we are having a crystal oscillator and audio source. So these two are given to our phase modulator. Right? So that we are getting what you call a narrowband FM. So this narrowband FM is given to the number of frequency multipliers. Then we have got a wide band frequency modulated output that we are going to have. Then we have the required power amplification so that that will be given to the antenna so that uh, you are can transmit to the space. So typical uh, FM transmitter is going to be having the same crystal oscillator and audio frequency and here instead of in the case of uh, low level modulation of uh, amplitude modulation, here we have the modulator, AM modulator, and then we have the amplifiers, linear amplifiers, then the transmission. But here, we doesn't require the linear amplification because we require the harmonic generation also, because frequency also has to be multiplied. Therefore, we are providing here a class C amplifiers. Whereas in the case of uh, AM transmission, after the modulation, you can have only Linear amplifiers, class A R, class B only. 
Normally we'll be providing here the class B amplification in the case of AM because that gives you the coil if we are going to have it and because that gives you the coil efficiency also and whereas uh, class B push pull gives you better efficiency that we are going to have. Okay, depending on the application of requirements will be having this. Whereas in the case of uh, FM transmitter we are providing here a nonlinear devices that we are going to have so that we can get the required frequency multipliers and here the carrier frequency, the deviation, everything is small, index also. Whereas after frequency multiplier, we are getting required carrier frequency and required deviation that we are going to have. And required for beta value that we are going to have. And that you have a power amplifier to give you required power levels that we are So that is what uh, typically you have the uh, indirect method of FM transmitter that we have. So this phase modulation are given here with a further one that we are going to have. So if at all if it is going to be maybe loading your crystal oscillator, so here we are providing an isolating amplifier also. Then this audio source is pre-processing and the audio frequency amplifier that we are going to have. So here in the case of uh, Reprocessing in the case of FM will be having what you call a pre emphasis network. Anyhow, we'll see that uh, what is the requirement for this pre emphasis and de emphasis networks when we are talking about the nice performance of uh, the frequency modulation. Because when you have this uh, AF signal, audio frequency signal, we are saying that the low frequency signal is going to be having higher amplitude compared to the high frequency signal. So if the amplitude decreases as the frequency increases, your deviation will not be maintained the same value. Therefore, in the pre-processing of the pre-emphasis network, what we are going to do is the high frequency components are amplified much compared to the low frequency signals. So that both the high frequency components and the low frequency components generates the required deviation in the frequency modulation that we have. So therefore, instead of a simple filtering that we are having in the case of uh, AM transmitters, because we said that uh, you limit to your 3.3 kilohertz or 4 kilohertz filtering and then amplification. That is here, not only the filtering, but we are going to have what you call a three emphasis also is going to be done to get the required deviations that we are going to have. So many things, we are going to have a cross amplifier and harmonic generator. So here, this crystal oscillator frequency that we are generating is the subharmonic of the final carrier frequency that we are going to generate. And similarly here, the phase modulation gives the reduced modulation index because this is narrow band FM and required wide band FM, if the required uh, modulation index and the deviation is going to obtain from your class CMFI and the harmonic generators that we are going to have whatever that we have done. So the typical uh, AM Armstrong method of uh, transmission, block schematic, uh, we have already seen this uh, in the, when we are talking about the AM, FM uh, modulation. We have seen this is the typical uh, Armstrong method of generation of uh, the FM signal that we are going to have. So this uh, we can say typically a FM transmitter. Our only thing is here we have to use the required power amplification to get the required levels that we are going to have. Otherwise, this is the same that we are going to have it. Only thing is that in the previous block, this entire thing I have put as a phase modulator with input as crystal oscillator and the output as uh, the analog input as the baseband signal. So this entire 90 phase shifter, adder and balance modulator all put together we have put as the phase modulator. Because that is what the output of this gives you the phase modulator output in narrow band that we are going to have. So they require the multipliers. And then here we have provided the mixer also so that to get the required carrier frequency of this 90 megahertz. Because simply multipliers gives you much higher frequency and we are not going to get the required values. Therefore uh, we are going to provide here a mixer also to give you the required frequency of uh, operation that we are going to have. So this is what uh, the indirect method of generation of FM and then FM transmitter using your 
pumps are in that are the indirect manner of using phase modulation to wide band frequency modulation or the other method of uh, fm uh, generation the direct method or what you call parameter variation method that we are going to have so based on your base band signal your parameter is going to change either resistor capacitor or inductive voltage and the reactance value of your device is going to change depending on the base band signal that we have so that's what uh, we see that the direct method of generation of fm pass method that we have So here we are having this device. So this we are giving the modulated signal. So your pre-processing network will be having a required pre-emphasis network that we are going to have it. For this baseband signal or your modulated signal or the audio frequency signal, then required uh, amplification is done, and this is given to your set or transistor or whatever the device or the actor that we are going to have. So depending on the or this may be your Or effect, or a reactor to give you a different parameters that we are going. So based on this uh, input signal, the reactance of this is going to change, and based on this variation in the reactance too, because this is uh, coupled to your LC circuit of your modulated oscillator, this will be changing the required frequency based on the base band signal that we are going to have. So here we are having this, and that we are having the cross amplifiers and all mode generators. We are providing this to the antenna further, and here after the required cross amplifiers and all mode generators, we are getting required frequency deviation and required frequency and the required power levels that we are going to have. So that that's why instead of simple multipliers, I have provided here the cross amplifiers also, so that we will be getting the required power levels also. so this is the basic uh, oscillator or the voltage controlled oscillator that we are going to have it or a frequency modulator this modulated oscillator combined with this reactance device the input to this is coming from the base band signal so that is the basic uh, transmitter that we are going to have it but here as you said that this is a reactance uh, device that we are going to have varying depending on the input signal that we are going to have the variation of capacitance or inductor therefore the frequency that we are going to have it coming out of this uh, modulator may not be a stable frequency that we are going to have it like crystal oscillator in the crystal oscillator the frequency is very very stable if you say that 200 kilohertz is exactly 200 kilohertz whereas because this is all these are active devices and the required variation that we are going to have it at the time varies the frequency of generation may be changing increasing or decreasing that we are going to have so if this is going to increasing or decreasing then at the receiving end your performance is change because at the transmitting itself you have a variable frequency that we are going to have so once you say that there is a frequency variation that will be treated as amplitude variations of your baseband signal in the case of the detection so this oscillator should not change its carrier frequency that we are going to have it should be very very stable zero variation that we are going to have it as much as possible ideally and we say that this oscillator gives that's why normally we will go for this indirect method of generation of water as previously but as you know that to get the required power levels we will be going for this uh, type of generation also therefore to provide that we are providing here a stabilization network so this part the feedback loop that we are going to provide gives you the required stabilization of your carrier frequency that we are going to have so how we are providing this stabilization so this is what is the output here at this point this is a modulated output this is a carrier with modulation that we are giving to the mixer along with a crystal oscillator whose frequency is very stable right so we are providing here a crystal oscillator which is very very stable and that we are comparing with frequency modulated signal 
the output that you are going to have it is this F0 minus F5 and will it be a simple frequency or any other thing? F0 minus F5. Some higher frequency you are going to have it. But this is again a frequency modulated signal. One thing is from the center carrier frequency we are mixing this to reduce the carrier frequency from one place to other place. That's what your frequency translation says. From baseband signal to carrier level we are shifting by simple multiplication that we are going to have it. So in this mixer we are providing that simple multiplication so that the output of this F0 minus F5 is having a frequency modulated variation that we are going to have it based on your baseband signal that we are going to have it. Therefore, this signal we are passing through your FM detector at the transmission itself. So here we are providing the phase discriminator. Right? So what will be the output of your FM detector? Your baseband signal. Right? And that we are providing further if any variations are there in the carrier frequency that have been eliminated so that this low pass filter gives some DC value of your baseband signal that we are going to have it. So that eliminating all the higher frequency components and only the variations based on the variations of your carrier frequency from this central frequency that we are going to have it, that will give you a required DC variation that we are going to have it. So that is further amplified to give the required level of control and that controls the reactance value of your device. Increasing or decreasing depending on the DC value that we are going to have. If it is a positive value, may be increasing or negative value, it may be decreasing. Or depending on the biasing that we are providing, the negative DC voltage may be increasing or positive voltage may be decreasing the reactance value. So that this output of your oscillator will be maintained same as that of your this last level frequency that we are going to have, which is very, very stable. If any variations here is there, if F5 and F0 are not the same, as for the required design that we are going to have it, so if F5 is of a certain design value, so if any variations from the design value is going to be coming here because of the variation in the parameters that we are going to have it because of raising or the voltage variation that we are going to have it, that is nullified and compared with the crystal oscillator and that provides required uh, DC variations and that will be controlling the oscillator frequency that we are going to have. So that you maintain a constant oscillator frequency or a stable oscillator frequency that we are going to have. So almost we are providing the same as that of your indirect method of generation by comparing this with your crystal oscillator frequency that we have. So this is what uh, the variations in the oscillator are eliminated by going for this stabilization process that we have. So that is uh, the one direct method of uh, FM transmitter that we have. And the variation that we are going to have it is Here we are providing, here the baseband signal is given here to our required variation that we are going to have it and this reactance uh, device is a part of your oscillator. Even though I put as a separate block here, but this reactant device is a part of your oscillator circuit itself because as the reactance varies, your oscillator frequency varies. So that's whatever modulation that we are going to have. The frequency varies depending on the input signal variations that we are going to have. It. So this entire uh, two blocks, reactance and oscillator, gives you the required frequency modulator that we are going to have. Then your uh, frequency multiplier is there to give required uh, operation and required data value. Then we are having the power amplifier and then transmission. 
So that is your normal frequency modulation transmitter that we are going to have without any stabilization network. So this straight box is your basic FM transmitter. Here you indicate a baseband signal or the modulating signal. And these two you put it as a single block as such. And put it as a oscillator or the frequency modulator. This reactance block and the oscillator block combined will be our modulator or FM modulator. And we are having the frequency multiplier and the power amplifier that we are going to have it and given to your antenna that we are going to have. But what is that we are doing is to get the stability. Again, we are comparing the signal with a crystal oscillator, which is very, very stable that we are going to have. Okay. So, here we are providing this. But here, in the previous circuit or previous bug that we are going to have it, here we are providing an FM detector to find out the variations in the output of this mixture that we are going to have it. So that that will be controlling your reactance value. But whereas in this, we don't have uh, the FM uh, demodulator, but one thing is, we are providing the frequency dividers. This frequency divider and this frequency divider is not the same, depending on the crystal oscillator frequency and depending on the output of the oscillator frequency, these dividers have been fixed so that the output of these two dividers are going to be having the same frequency component that we are going to have. Along with the carrier frequency, you have the output of this frequency divider consists of the frequency modulation also. This is a single tone frequency. Output of this frequency divider is only a carrier frequency without any modulation. Whereas the output of this frequency divider is having a frequency modulation. But because you are providing number of frequency dividers here, the frequency variations that you are having here are going to be very, very small. Suppose you have one megahertz signal here with a deviation of, let us say, 50 kilohertz. That you are reduced to 5 kilohertz total, one megahertz to 5 kilohertz. And similarly, that 50 kilohertz to 2 hertz or 3 hertz we are going to get. Therefore, this also almost have the same carrier frequency that we are going to have without any variations as such, minor variations that we are going to have compared to this crystal oscillator that we are going to have. So these two frequency dividers are going to have the same frequency if there is no variations in your oscillator what that we are going to have. If there is no variation, no problem. But if there are any variations in the output of your first frequency divider that we are going to have compared to the this last set of frequency divider that we are going to have it, then these two signals what we are going to give it is to two frequency modulators, the balanced modulators that we are going to have it with a nine degrees phase shift so that in phase and quadrature phase you are going to get output of your two balanced modulators that we are going to have. The output of these two, two balanced modulators are going to be a two-phase output because here the crystal oscillator frequency is, for one thing, we are having a 90 degrees phase shift signal. We are giving it to the this balanced modulator, whereas in-phase signal we are going to give it to this balanced modulator. Therefore, these two signals of these two outputs will be in quadrature. Therefore, we are having a two-phase signal that we are going to have. So these two phase signals for amplified with the same value and then given to a two phase scatter, the motors that we are going to have. If these two signals are having the same value, the scatter will get the center place. If one signal is higher than the other signal, the scatter may be rotating to the light and if this signal is higher than this signal, the shadow may be rotated to the left. Based on the variations in the, this signal or this signal frequency. Based on these two signal variations, this state of, the shadow of this two-phase motor will be rotating to right or 
left that way, I am going to have it. So this state of rotation is coming to your conductor or your capacitor. So your capacitor is going to be rotating or variation of the rotator is going to be right or left. That is capacitor value is increasing or decreasing depending on the frequency of your oscillator output that we are going to have. So if it is more, it will be rotating to the right and if it is less, it may be rotating to the left. So that after this variation, this output is going to maintain the same value or this rotation of this data will be continuing until the output of this frequency divider and the output of this frequency divider are the same. That means output of this oscillator is same as that of your crystal oscillator harmonic frequencies that we are going to have. They are not exactly the same. This crystal frequency and this oscillator output are not the same, but they are the harmonics. When they are exactly equal to the harmonics, then this scatter will be remaining constant. Otherwise, it will be changing until this oscillator frequency changes. So that the final output of your transmitter through the antenna will maintain the constant frequency that we have found. As per the required design of your carrier frequency. So any variations with the timing or the voltage variations or the device variations that we are going to have it, that will be reduced or eliminated by using this frequency stabilization network that we are going to have. Or this we will be having as automatic frequency control also because the frequency of this oscillator is controlled by this feedback loop that we are going to have. So this system or the previous system will be saying that automatic frequency control. Which frequency? This oscillator frequency we are controlling automatically so that to maintain the required designed value that we are going to have. So this is uh, the basic uh, transmitter with the stabilization of your oscillator frequency variation that we have. So that is about uh, the FM transmitter with stabilization that we are So in addition to your AM transmitter and the FM transmitter, suppose you have a, a telegraph signal. How the telegraph signal will be? You will heard of a telegraph signal. Huh? Dot and dash with the spaces that we are going to have. Okay? That's what uh, given a dot and dash. The dash will be having uh, t times t space of the dot that we are going to have it. And in between uh, spaces that we are going to have it. So the space between two cache dot and dash is again equivalent to that of a dash that we are going to have it. That is, we are going to key the on and off of the voltage that we are going to have it. If you on for a small duration, a dot duration, or three times that, a dash is going to be assumed to be transmitted. And again, this dot and dash durations are not exactly fixed in your telegraph transmission that we are going to have it. That depends on the operator because when you are keying on and off, you can't maintain the same value. If I am keying in, I will be rotating with my own speed and you are going to type in in a different speed that we are going to have. So dot and dashes are going to be generated with different timings that we are going to have depending on the different persons who are going to key in. So dot and dash, that's what uh, the keying signal that we are going to have to provide the required variation that we are going to have it. So in the case of uh, amplitude modulation, on and off, you can have it and the receiving end, again, the signal will be heard with on and off. Then again, the efficiency of the operator will be coming here so that it is that and dash is the and then you will automatically decode 
after the training that we are going to have. How many darts dashes are there and then uh, straight away. It is the, it is used to have what you call a telegram because now all this have been disappeared, you know, telegram and telegram and analysis and we are going to have. You have already mobile in your hand. Therefore, uh, it doesn't require uh, even to write a letter also. That's why your writing skills also have gone down. Previously, at least you used to write a letter once in a month at least to your parents. Now, every day you can talk, so there is no necessity of any letter. So that's why your writing skills also are coming down. But at least now you practice so that uh, you can have your, to your writing skills also. So, dot and dash uh, signals that we are going to have it. Anyhow, when you come to the digital modulation, uh, shifting techniques that we are going to have it, there we are going to have again on and off. Uh, so that's why we are having here uh, this uh, keying signal. Then based on that, uh, this device will be changing its frequency. On and off. This is on, this is off, and on again. Whereas, in the case of frequency modulation, On should have a certain frequency and off should have a certain frequency. It cannot be zero because you have a 100 megahertz or 40 megahertz uh, carrier frequency. So dot will be having a certain frequency plus and dash will be having a certain frequency minus. So F dot and F dash. These two frequencies are deviating from your central carrier frequency that we are going to have. So based on that, this reactance device changes its value so that the output of this oscillator is going to change based on your reactance value that we are going to have. When you have on, this will be having certain reactance. When this is off, it will be having certain reactance. And based on the duration also, how much you can receive at the receiving signal, you can decode it and then get the required data that we are going to have. So, this is what a typical uh, same uh, frequency modulation that we are going to accept that uh, baseband signal. I have said that this is a keying signal. Otherwise, this is a typical uh, FM modulator only. Right? Similarly, in the case of baseband signal, your on and off keying will be there with the required modulation that we are going to have. But one of the problem is, here, if you have the signal like this, abrupt, on, off, what will happen? Abrupt on and off. What does it mean? What is the frequency content of these signals? High frequency components are there and this abrupt variation that we are going to have. Therefore, at the receiving end, we will be hearing what you call a key clicks. Because we are having keying that we are going to have it because of on and off. We say that uh, key clicks are going to be heard at the receiving end in this up the on and off system that we are going to have. That's why we are providing here wave shaping device that we are going to have, the circuit that we are going to have, so that this signal is modified in this way. This is of an up variation, we are having a smooth variation. Similarly here also. So that the high frequency components be reduced and then we are going to have what you call reduced key clicks that we have. Okay? So that's what uh, the radio telegraphy that we are going to have, the mix of uh, telegraph signals will be having these uh, key clicks and uh, they can be reduced by providing required wave shaping of your signal that we are going to generate by this key engine of the data that we are on and off. So that is about uh, the radio transmitters, the AM transmitters and that of the FM transmitters that we are going to have it. So basically we started with uh, the classification, right? So based on uh, the modulation, we will be having AM transmitters or 
the FM transmitter. And depending on where you are modulating, at low power level you modulate and then increase the power level to effectively transmit the required levels. That we call it a low level modulation. Whereas you increase the power levels of the carrier and the modulating signal to required levels and modulate output side where you transmit, that we call it as high level modulation that we have. So this is the classification that we are going to have it, AM transmitter, FM transmitter, or high level modulation and the low level modulation that we are going to have. And what is that uh, we have seen? In the AM transmitter, the typical uh, glass schematic that we are going to have it with the required uh, buffer in between the crystal oscillator and the amplifier that we are going to have to class the amplifier. Then we have seen uh, the modulation. So similarly you have to amplify the baseband signal to the required level so that you maintain the average modulation index to the required level that we are going to have. Then we said that uh, to maintain the or reduce the distortion and the hum modulation that we are going to have, we have provided what you call a loop, a feedback loop that we are going to have so that the distortion can reduce or the all the advantages of your negative feedback will be coming here in this feedback system that we are going to have. In addition to this, we said that we are going to provide what you call a peak limiter, automatic volume control, and volume compression that we are going to have. So this gives you the performance increase of the AM transmission. Then we have seen what you call, uh, then we have gone for the FM modulation. So in that case, we have gone for indirect generation and direct generation that we have gone for. So we have our peak stage modulation, or what you call uh, narrow band FM signal. That we are used to the cross C multiplication. Then we have gone for the power amplifier to have your transmission signal. When you have your uh, phase modulation and then transmission because the carrier frequency that you are generating is going to be generated by a crystal oscillator there is no problem for the pretty of your indirect method of generation of your FM transmitters that we are going to have. Whereas when you are using the parameter variation method because the parameters are variable depending on the time, temperature and so on there is stability also. So we have seen uh, two methods how to increase the carrier stability that we are going to have. One by the frequency division and another by comparison and then base detection that we are going to have that is the required stability of your carrier. Then I also introduced about the radio telegram transmission also where we said that uh, on and off uh, transmission that we are going to have it, we will be having what to call uh, key tricks and by proper wave shaping of the signal that we are going to generate by this key clicks that uh, uh, can be eliminated when we are having this keying in of the signal that we are going to have on the data and the dashes that we So that will be our uh, radio transmitters that we are going to have. Okay? So next class we will uh, discuss about radio receivers. Okay? That's what Another problem that we are going to have, one box.